One, two, three, four, five examples here for optimization. If you are just using this video to revise for the exam, if you want some extra practice, you may wish to skip ahead till you see one of these bright yellow pages with example one, two, three, four, or five written across them. They are just before the examples. If you are learning about optimization for the first time, then obviously you'll want a wee bit more. So what is optimization all about? Well, I'm sure you have all come across the word optimum before. If you look in the dictionary for the word optimum, you will find that really it just means the best possible. So, optimization problems are real life worded problems where you have to find the maximum or minimum, in other words, the best possible values. Where does this come in in real life? Well, in commerce or industry, production costs and profits can often be given by a mathematical formula. And a company would want to minimize production costs and maximize profits. For example, if you had a company such as Kellogg's, who make the breakfast cereals, they will know the volume of cereal they will put in a box. And for that volume, they will want to find the minimum surface area uh, of the box. So they will want to minimize the amount of cardboard they use. And to work out the minimum, they can use optimization. Other words and phrases to look for whenever you get one of these problems, look out for the words least or smallest or cheapest, most economical, greatest, maximum profit, minimum profit. Really, all of these just mean look for the maximum or the minimum. So what do you do if you are asked for the maximum or minimum? Well, you know the maximum or minimum occur at the end points, but more usually, and as far as the optimization examples are concerned, they will be at a maximum or minimum turning point. And as you know, when do you get a maximum or minimum turning point? It's when the derivative equals zero. Woo! So it's more differentiation. So let's move on to example one. Should really have a wee bell for this. Ding a ling a ling a ling. Example one. Here's the example. You may wish to pause the video and copy it down or try it, but let's move on now with the answer. So there's 100 meters of fencing is used to make three slides of a rectangular enclosure against an existing wall. The breadth of the rectangle is x meters as shown. I find an expression for the length of the field in terms of x, find an expression for the area of the field in terms of x, and the greatest area that can be enclosed. So these are the three things you need to find. So we've got this mighty purdy picture of the wall, and this blue line going around it represents the fence. You can see that obviously at each end you have x. It tells you that in the question. The breadth of the rectangle is x. And the length here we don't know. But part A says find an expression for the length of the field in terms of x. So how could we go about doing that? Well, you know there is 100 meters of fencing. So if you add this side, this side, and this side, you end up with 100 meters. But because you know this is x and this is x, if you took them away from the 100, you would be left with just that length, whatever it was. So the length is going to be 100 minus x minus x, which gives you 100 minus 2x. That would just simplify. For part B, you find an expression for the area of the field. Well, think back to part A, we now know this length is 100 minus 2x. So the first thing, just rewrite the length as 100 minus 2x. To work out the area, how do you get the area of a rectangle, Chelsea? Good, it's just length times breadth. So you just want to take the length, 100 minus 2x, and you multiply it by x. The way I'd probably do it is to put brackets around 100 minus 2x and just put the x in front of that. And from there, you can just multiply out your brackets giving you 100x minus 2x squared. And the length is in meters, so the area will be squared meters. That is how you do part B. 
for part C, find the greatest area that can be enclosed. So again, think back to what I was saying about optimization. If you're ever asked for the maximum or the greatest or even minimum, think of differentiation. You're always wanting to get the maximum or minimum, so you would differentiate. So take the expression for area, a equals 100x minus 2x squared, and you can differentiate it. So here we're differentiating a with respect to x, and that would give us 100 minus 4x. And just remember, stationary points occur when dy by dx equals 0, or in this case, dA by dx equals 0. So you can set the derivative equal to 0. Add 4x to both sides, but doink. Divide both sides by 4, but doink. And x would equal 25. Once x is 25, though, how do you know that that is the greatest? How do you know that's not going to give you the least, the smallest area? Olivia, what do you use? Good, you're an expert at nature tables. Well done. So you put in 25, pick a number just before 25, 24. Pick a number just after, 26, and sub it into the derivative dA by dx. So this here is dA by dx, so you want to sub it in here. So if you sub in 24, 100 minus 4 times 24 gives you a positive number, meaning the gradient will be positive. If you sub in 25, you would end up with 100, take away 100, which is 0. And if you sub in 26, that would give you a negative number, meaning you will have a negative gradient. That confirms then that the graph will be looking something like that, meaning at 25, you will have a maximum turning point. So you can say there will be a maximum when x is 25. Make sure you always read the question though. Find the greatest area that can be enclosed. We're not asked for the value of x that gives you the area. We're asked what will the actual area be. So you need to finish this off and say the area will be, and you know that's going to occur when x is 25. And if you've got an expression for the area, you can just replace x with 25. So, 100x minus 2x squared would end up as 100 times 25 minus 2 times 25 squared. Simplify that, you get 2,500 minus 1,250, giving you, drumroll, 1,250 squared metres. And that is how you do question one. Let's move on to example two. ding a ling a ling a ling Example two. This time we have a question about a carriage clock. Again, you may wish to pause it, read it, copy it, whatever you like. The rectangular gra glass front of a carriage clock has breadth x centimetres. The jeweller has used 16 centimetres of gold leaf to edge the perimeter of the glass. So the perimeter of the front will be this bit here. So you know that will be 16. Find, in terms of x, expressions for the height of the glass and the area of the glass rectangle just at the front. B, find the dimensions of the rectangle that give you the maximum area of this front face, the rectangle. And for C, calculate the maximum area of that glass. So, part A. Whenever you get one of these questions, sometimes it's best to do a wee sketch of what you have. We're not interested in the volume here of the clock, it's just this front rectangle. So, we've got a rectangle and we know the length is x. Obviously, if you have x at the bottom, you also have x at the top. So you could write that down. From there, we want, though, an expression for the height of the glass. So how do we get the height? Well, think about what it tells you in the question. It says the jeweller has used 16 centimetres of gold leaf to go right around. So again, going right the way around the edge, that is 16. And that is the perimeter. So to get the perimeter, you add the length of the sides. So we've got x here, x here. We've got the height and we've got the height. So you would add them to get together to get the perimeter. Um, simplifying that, we've got two x's. I've got two heights. So I'm writing that down as 2x add 2h. But again, the perimeter is 16. He uses 16 to go right the way around it. 
So 16 must equal 2x add 2h. If you divide every single term by 2, or take out 2 as a common factor here and then divide, you'd end up with 8 equals x plus h. You want an expression for the height, so to get h on its own, just subtract x from both sides, or move the x over and take it away. That will leave you with h, the height, equals 8 minus x. So that is an expression for the height. Also, you need to find an expression for the area of the glass. To get the area, think about the shape. Nice and easy, it is a rectangle, so you will just want to use length times breadth. So the area is length times breadth, or in this case, it's length and height. That's what you found. So you could just sub in what you know. You know the length is x. You know the breadth here, or the height, is 8 minus x. So that'll give you the 8 minus x times by x. Just sub brackets in. Uh, just put brackets around that when you sub it in. Multiplying out the brackets, and you will get 8x minus x squared. Therefore, the two expressions that you came up with the height will be 8 minus x centimetres, and the area will be 8x minus x squared square centimetres. For part B, find the dimensions of the rectangle that give the maximum area of the front. So again, you've got this word maximum. Whenever you see the word maximum or minimum, you know you differentiate. So, differentiating area, so we differentiate area, we have dA, on the other side we have x, so dA by dx, and if you differentiate that, you will get 8 minus 2x. How do you find the maximum? Well, stationary points occur when this derivative equals 0. So, dA by dx would equal 0. If you set that equal to 0 then, set 8 minus 2x equal to 0, and you can add 2x to both sides, but doink, you can divide both sides by 2, but doink, and x would equal 4. Again, how do you know if that is a maximum or a minimum? You use the nature table. So, your nature table, pick a number just before 4, pick a number just after. If you put 3 into the derivative, so 8 minus 2 times 3, you get positive 2, meaning you, it's a positive gradient. If you sub in 4, you would get 0, and if you sub in 5, 8 take away 2 times 5, you get negative 2. It's a negative number, so the graph will slope down. That confirms then that the graph will go up and then back down, meaning that will be a maximum. So you can say there will be a maximum when x equals 4. Yay! Find the dimensions of the rectangle. Well, from the last slide, the length was x, we were told that in the question, and the height was 8 minus x. So the dimensions then of this amazing wee rectangle will be the length is 4, and the height will be 8, take away 4, which is just 4. So that is the dimensions of the rectangle. For part C, calculate the maximum area of the front. Two ways to do this. We came up with this in part A, an expression for the area. The area was 8x minus x squared. We know the maximum area is when x is 4, so you could say the area would be, and just replace x with 4. So 8 times 4, take away 4 squared. That ends up giving you 16 squared centimetres. You could also say, if you know the length is 4 and the breadth was 4, you could just do 4 times 4. Both ways work, as long as you show what you're doing. But that is example two. Woo! ding a ling a ling a ling Example three. This time, four congruent squares, which means four squares, the exact same shape, exact same size, of length x. Centimetres are cut from the corners of a cardboard square of side 12 centimetres. The flaps are then folded up to form an open tray of volume V. Part A proved that V, in terms of X, would be 144X minus 48X squared plus 4X cubed. And B, what value of X maximises V? 
So for this one, you are given these diagrams as well. Just make sure that you get your head around understanding it. So it's saying here that there's the squares. Every side on this square is X, and you're cutting that out. You're cutting out this one as well, and this one, and if you cut out that one, and then if you fold it along these lines, you will get these flaps that are sticking out. If you fold that up, you end up getting something that looks like that. You get your open uh, tray, meaning there's no top on it. So, for part A, prove that the volume would be that. So how do you go about getting the volume? Well, if you think about it, what shape have you folded it into? Well, it's just a cuboid. And the volume of cuboid is just length times breadth times height. So, what we need to do is we need to sub in the length, the breadth, and the height. Obviously, the height here is just going to be x, so we know what the height is. The length and the breadth, though, we need to work out. So, if you think about it, if you're cutting out this X here, then really you're folding up this flap. And if you fold it up, well, that there is just going to be the length of that box. And that length's what you need to know. From one side to the other, it's 12 centimetres uh, right at the start. And if you take away that X, so take away this X, and if you take away this x, it leaves you with just that length. So you could say that length would be the 12 take away the two x's. So 12 take away 2x. Obviously, it is a square, so this will be the exact same as well. So that side there will also be the 12, and you're taking away this x, you're taking away this x. So that will also be 12 take away 2x. From there, you end up with this the way I would do that is forget about that x and just multiply out your double brackets there. 12 take away 2x times 12 take away 2x. Use rainbows, use foil, use whichever method you like to multiply that out. And then once you've done that, multiply every term by x. If you do that, you get 144x minus 48x squared plus 4x cubed. And, abracadabra, that is what we're looking for. We're asked to prove that the volume equals that. And we have done it. We have shown our working, and we have found the volume in terms of x to be that answer there. So that is how you would do part A. For part B, what value of x maximizes the volume? So what are you thinking, again, when you see the word maximizes or maximum? Differentiate! Yes, perfectly right. You want to differentiate. So you differentiate v. If you differentiate vx, you'd have v dash x. So differentiating, and we end up with that. But how do we know when we get the maximum, Calissa? Set it to zero. Perfect. The stationary points, the maximum and minimum, will occur when the derivative equals zero. So, set that equal to zero. All I'm doing is just writing it back to front with the x squared term, then the x, then the number. If you get it in that form, something you have been doing for years and years is factorizing. So take out 12 as the highest common factor. We'd be left with x squared, take 8x plus uh, 12. And from there, you could also factorize that. Doing that, you get 12 bracket x minus 6 bracket x minus 2. If that is equal to 0, then either x minus 6 would equal 0 or x minus 2 would equal 0, giving you then x to be 6 or 2. So we've got two values of x. If you think about it then, just going back to the question that we had, we had that rectangle and we're cutting away x centimetres here and x centimetres here, but... If you cut away six centimetres, if that was six centimetres in, and this was also six centimetres in, well, the six had the six would make 12, meaning you'd be cutting right the way into the middle on both sides, meaning you would have no cardboard left. Your box would be non-existent. It would make no sense. So X cannot be six, as the cardboard will then be removed entirely, meaning then the value of X has to be two. It's the only number that makes sense. Once you've found that x is 2, what do you have to do after that, Isla? Nature table. Well done. You've got it. And with your nature table, you want to, again, put in 2 and then sub in a value just before 2 and just after. So if you put 1 into the derivative, 
v dash x, so 144 minus 96 times 1, add 12 times 1 squared, you end up with a positive number. If you sub in 2 into the derivative, you get 0, and if you sub in a number after 2, 3, then you would end up with a negative. So that confirms the graph will go up, it will reach the maximum turning point, and then it will turn back down, so that will be a maximum. So you can say the maximum volume occurs when x equals 2. And that is how you do example 3. Woo! ding a ling a ling a ling Example number 4. This here, a zoo intends to build a new aviary in the shape of a cuboid with a square floor. Netting is used to form the four sides and the roof. The volume of the aviary will be 500 cubic uh, metres. So part A, if x metres is the length of one of the edges of the floor, show that the area A of netting required is given by this formula here. And B, find the dimensions of the aviary to ensure that the cost of netting is minimised. So part A, we are wanting to show that the area of netting is going to be given by this formula. So how could we go about doing that? Well think about it, it's telling you that the netting is going to be over four sides and the roof. So you need to work out the area of the four sides and the roof. So think about this, the area of the roof is dead easy, that's the same as the area of the base. That is just x metres by x metres, so that's just going to be uh, x times x, which will be x squared. So that's the area of the roof. The area of the four sides, well the area of the four sides, if you take one of these sides, really what we've got is we've got a rectangle, and we know that length is x, and we know that height is, well we don't know the height. We don't know what it is, so we can just leave it as x times h. But if that area is x times h, then you've got the four sides, so you'd have four lots of x times h. So 4xh. From there, that is the formula that we came up with, but it's not what we've been asked to find. We were asked to show that the area is equal to this formula up here, but we don't have that. The x squared, yep, we've got that, that's fine. The 4x times h. Well, if you look at it, look for the letter that we have that they don't. We have an x here, but they don't have, uh, sorry, we have an h here, but there's no h in this formula. So we need to try and find what h is equal to so we can replace it. So this is where we think about the other information we're given. And the other information that we're given is the volume. So as well as being told the area, we're also told the volume. So the volume equals 500 cubic metres. How would you work out the volume of a cuboid? What would you be using, Connor? Good. Length times breadth times height. So x times x times h must equal that 500. Okay, so cuboid is length times breadth times height. x times x times, and then we're just calling that h for height. If you rearrange that, we could find out what h is equal to. Yes! So, divide both sides by x squared, and we know h equals 500 over x squared. Now, we know what h is equal to. So, in here, we can replace h with 500 over x squared. So, doing that, we'd have x squared plus 4x times the 500 over x squared. So we just went off to the side, we wrote down the other information and found what h was, and then we're going back to this original equation. From there, multiplying out the brackets, well, x squared will stay as x squared. If you take the numbers, 4 times uh, 500 will give you 2,000, and if you have x divided by x squared, that will just leave you with a divide by x. And if you look at it, that is what we're asked to show. So we have the answer for that. Part B. Find the dimensions of the aviary to ensure that the cost of netting is minimised. Again, you've got this word minimised. What do you always think when you see maximum or minimum? Differentiate! Woo! 
Exactly, that's what you have to do. So we need to differentiate A for area. Doing that, though, is going to be difficult because we have an X on the bottom of this fraction. So let's rewrite this. So X squared will stay as X squared, but we need to move the X up to the top. So X to the power of 1 just now moves up and becomes X to the power of negative 1. So we have 2000 X to the power of negative 1. From there, we can differentiate. So differentiating A with respect to X. So dA by dx would equal 2x minus 2000x to the power of negative 2. How do you know when you get the maximum or the minimum? You set it equal to 0, set the derivative equal to 0. So from there you'd have 2x minus 2000x to the power of negative 2 equals 0. And you need to solve that to find x. But how can you do that? Erin, what are you saying? Perfect. Rewrite it with positive indices. It's difficult to work out x if you have a negative index. So let's rewrite it with a positive. So write that as 2000 over x squared. From there, if we add this fraction to both sides, move the fraction over the equals, it would change to a positive, we'd end up with that. From there, get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by x squared. We'd end up with 2x cubed is 2000. And divide both sides by 2 would get x cubed is 1000 and if you take the cube root then x will be equal to 10. Once again we have shown that there will be a minimum or a maximum when x is 10 but we need to double check that and we need to know if it is a maximum or a minimum. So we use the nature table and if you take a number just before 10 and sub it into the derivative remember if you sub it in here it's going to be quite tricky. So let's not do that. Let's sub it into here. This is when we rewrote the derivative with positive indices. So you could just use a calculator for that. Sub in 9, 2 times 9 minus 2000 over 9 squared, and you get a negative number. If you sub in 10, 2 times 10 minus 2000 over 10 squared, it is 0. And if you sub in a number bigger than that, let's go for 11, then you would get a positive. Once again, that just confirms that the graph will slope down then up again. So that will be a minimum. So you can say there will be a minimum area when x equals 10. Also, you need to know the dimensions. It's asking you in the question, find the dimensions of the area. It's not saying find out x or anything like that. It's the dimensions. So if you think about the cuboid, you need to know the length, the breadth, and the height. So we know the length is obviously 10. The breadth as well, because it's a square base, will also be 10. And to get the height, think back to the last page. If I get back a page for a second, doink! Uh, we had the height in terms of x here. We know knew the height was 500 over x squared. So using that, going back here, we can say the height would be the 500 over x squared, which becomes 500 over 10 squared, which gives us 5 meters. Therefore, you can say that the height would be 5 meters, the length would be 10 meters, and the breadth would be 10 meters. So that is the three dimensions. And that is it. For example, number four. Woo! Ding a ling a ling a ling! Example number five. An open water tank in the shape of a triangular prism has a capacity of 108 litres. The tank is to be lined on the inside to make it watertight. Show that the surface area to be lined on the inside. A is given by that formula there, and B find the value of X which minimizes the surface area. So for this one, we've got our water tank and we know the inside, so this rectangle here, the two triangles at either side and the other uh, rectangle are going to be covered. So we need to know the area that is going to be aligned and show it's given by that formula. So to do that, just as I said, you need to think about the different shapes you are going to line. On the inside, you've got that the two rectangles and the two triangles. The triangle, you can find the area of the triangle by doing um, x times x and then halving it because it's a triangle. We know that side is x. We know that length is x as well. So x squared and then half it. 
so we'll have x squared. The other triangle will be the exact same, that will also be a half x squared. And the area of this rectangle inside will be the length times the breadth, so it's the length times x. And obviously on the other wall as well, that will also be the length times x, so it will be lx, or xl. Simplifying that, half x squared add half x squared, it just gives us x squared. And xl add xl gives us 2xl. That is the formula that we came up with. So we've got the x squared, and here they've got 432,000 over x. But we have 2x times l. So we've got x's, we've got numbers, but also we've got an l. There is no l here. So we need to find what l is equal to to replace it. So this is where we think about the other information we're given. And in the question it says the capacity, so the volume, is 108 litres. So, go off to the side, just draw that arrow, off to the side and say the volume equals 108 litres. Because we're working with centimetres here, you can put that in to cubic centimetres. Timesing it then by 1,000 will give you 108,000 cubic centimetres. If you worked out the volume of this shape, though, as well, you could do that by thinking, well, it's got this triangle and it's a prism. So it's the triangle that's running the length of this shape. So the area of the triangle was a half x squared, and to get the volume, you would times it by the length. So we know as well the volume would be the half x squared times by the length. So a half x squared L. If you then say that the volume a half x squared L equals that 108,000. You could say that. You've got a fraction here, you've got half, so let's just multiply both sides by 2. That'll give us x squared L equals 216,000. And from there, think back to the original equation. We want to find what L is. We need to know L in order to replace it. So here, to get L on its own, we get rid of this times by x squared. So divide both sides by x squared, and we'd have L equals 216,000 divided by x squared. So now we know what L is. L is equal to 216,000 over x squared. So we can go back over here and replace this L with... Add the 216,000 over x squared. So that'll give us x squared plus 2x times all of that. From there, we'll just multiply out the brackets. x squared stays as x squared, plus number-wise, 2 times 216,000 will give us 432,000. And if you do x divided by x squared, we'd just be left with that x on the bottom. And that is how you would do part A, because that is what we were asked to show. Part B. Find the value of x which minimises the surface area. So the area we were given with that formula, we were also told it in the question. So even if you're not sure about part A, you can still do part B. So here it's got the word minimise. What do you think when it's got a minimum, maximum? Differentiate! Exactly! So you differentiate that. First of all, we've got x on the bottom, so we'd have to rewrite that. Okay, so bring that up to the top, and we'd have x to the power of negative 1. From there, as I said, we can differentiate that. So doing that, you'd end up with 2x, and then you'd have minus 432,000 x to the power of negative 2. Stationary points occur when the derivative equals 0. So you would set that derivative equal to zero. But again, doing that, you'd have x to the power of negative two, which is going to make it difficult to find. So replace that, rewrite it, sorry, with an x to the negative two just in the bottom. So you have two uh, x minus 432,000 over x squared and set that equal to zero. From there then, you could move the fraction to the other side just add the fraction to both sides, and then move the x squared to the other side as well. Multiply both sides by x squared, we'd have 2x cubed equals 432,000. Divide both sides by 2, and x cubed would be 216,000. And to get x, you would then take the cube root. Taking the cube root would just give you 60. So that is your value of x. 
Once again, you have shown that x will therefore be a maximum or a minimum, but how do you prove it's going to minimize? You'd have to use your nature table. So set up your nature table and pick a value just before 60, like 59, and a value just after, like 61, and sub it into the derivative. Remember though, the derivative here will be difficult to work out because you have x to the power of negative two. So when we wrote it, we had the 432,000 over x squared. So sub it into all of this. So if you sub in 59, two times 59 minus 432,000 over 59 squared, you end up with a negative number. So there will be a slope downwards. If you sub in 60, you do get zero. And if you sub in 61, you'd end up with a positive number. That again just confirms that the graph will slope down and then back up meaning that will be a minimum. So you can say there will be a minimum area when x equals that 60 centimetres. And that is how you would do example five. Woo! That is all the examples. So if you're needing a practice, you can go to the Heinemann Higher Book. There are a couple of exercises on optimization, or the Maths in Action Book also has a couple of pages of practice for optimization. Give it a shot. Let me know if you need a hand. Good luck. Bye. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling.